you guys like were doing all this pressure on top of the world. You're all back together. And then this tweet comes out. Well, yeah. first you were renewed, I think, right? You were yes, renewed we, for a second we, season. Actually, we've just been renewed and we just did up front in New York. And so like this is, you came back with a bang. Yeah, and in New York, we basically had talked about, and she, she was planning on having somebody kind of take over her social media. And I had met with members of her family and it was, we were all just happy, you know? And I think yeah. it is a classic example of sometimes you know, you just have to be mindful and, and be aware that things change rapidly. And we went from suddenly everything was great to the whole world falling apart and falling on your head. And I had to make a really tough decision about how I felt. And there was no advantage to me making the statement. It would have been way easier. And most people just kind of stayed quiet. But I had been vocal and I felt like I had a responsibility and I – Look, I coach kids, and I coach kids, a lot of them who are from lower-income families and a lot of diversity and a lot of, you know, kids who, you know, have to really battle for what they have and who also were sending me messages like, hey, coach, how do you feel about this or, or what is happening or, or are you do you agree with this? And I feel like it would have been disingenuous and cowardly of me to have said nothing. So what I did was I said the truth and I believe so often people always want to talk about what they would have done in history or what they would have done if they're challenged or put in a tough position. And I felt like I did it with honor and I felt like I was fair and I was open and I was honest. And I felt like I was honest about how much I care for her and that I felt it was out of character, but that these comments were repugnant and, and, you know, completely outside of what was acceptable. And I, I remember that morning because I had stayed up all night doing a script and I literally woke up and it was one of those mornings where you just know something's happening and they didn't have any other choice but to cancel the show. If the character had said it, we could have made it a teachable moment. But given the way it was said and the amount of stuff that was said, there really was no, no way, especially as a network, there was no way to support it or continue in that sense. So when it got canceled, much later that day, after, after we had had our exchange, you know, Rosanna and I had our exchange on Twitter and, and the world kind of got real ugly and I started getting a lot of really negative response. There was no advantage and the show had been canceled and I had been very honest and I just was like, okay, you take your lumps. Like this is the downside of fame, right? Like if you do something people don't like, then you got to stand in and take, take a little bit of the beating and take the threats and take the risks. Um, and then I never imagined in a million years that they would come back. And I almost didn't come back for the Connors. I was the very last person to sign on. I was the very last person to say yes, um, because I have such tremendous respect for her and I felt torn and conflicted about it, of continuing without her. It like, wasn't- That's okay. what it was, sorry, I didn't mean to You didn't want to come back without her at that point. That's yeah, at that point, I, I, I didn't know how I felt. It wasn't until it was, acknowledged and I got acknowledgement from her team and her people that she had signed the rights and that she wanted the show to continue and that it was going with her blessing that I started to kind of consider coming back. And then, you know, I, I really had to analyze how I felt about that and what that meant coming in. And I, I actually, in, now I'm really proud that I came back and what we did at the beginning of that season, you know, Mylon Robinson came in and I had such unbelievable high hopes for what was coming with her. Um, that was some of the best work I've ever done and some of the best experiences I've ever had on set. And we were empowered in those first few weeks, but then the tone kind of shifted. I mean, were you shocked going back to the morning of where you said you felt something happen? Like, were you, like when you read the actual tweet, were you just like, I'm oh, so, so confused? Yeah, confused, devastated, um, shocked. Uh, I kept looking for more and like 
trying to understand and where it came from and was there a fight or something that predated it or, or, or that initiated it. And, and then you just, you, you go through the, the, the conscious part of it of like, you know, what does this mean? And, and, and why, and wh where did it come from? And I know she said that she was, there was some Ambien or there's some mental illness and there's all these other things. And, and then it's also, I love someone who needs help in this essence is what they're saying to you. And so your heart breaks in, it, it's like in layers, if that makes any sense. Almost yeah. like an onion, right? Like Completely. your heart's breaking in, in layers and you're peeling off each one and each one has its own. And all you know is really they're all each one going to make you cry in some other way and, and break your heart. It just, it just got more and more complex as it went. Did you talk to like Sarah or Lisa? Because I know Sarah made a statement like before you made your statement. Like, was it a... Yeah, uh, you... I had talked to everybody pretty much that day. Um, and I, the first person I reached out to her, her, her team, Roseanne's team, the, her manager, you know, I sent her an email because I couldn't get a response from anybody. And I, I said, I feel that I have to make a statement that is consistent with my beliefs based on all of the stuff I've said and how I've spoken I've been. Is, is there stuff in here that you don't want me to say or that you want me to change? Because I'll be respectful, but I have to be authentic to me. And I never got a response until after I made my statement. And then we had a public fight and I basically got flogged publicly as a kid, um, which is also fair for her is to have the right to have a strong opinion or not like what I said, the same as I didn't like what she said. And, but I've been very authentic about the fact of that I, to this day, I love her. There's so many things about her that I think are wonderful and that I admire about her just because I didn't agree with what she said. And I certainly don't agree with those ideas. It doesn't mean I forget everything good that ever happened. And I don't fully understand. I still don't. And, and I can't because that mindset or, or thinking is so far outside of mine. And it's just really unfortunate. But that like brings up cancel culture, right? It's, it's like, a, like you said, there's an onion of like, I mean, I, I believe this is possible. I don't think a lot of people do, but I think it's possible to say, I don't agree with anything you just said or understand what you said, but you're my family or my friend and I love you. And so I believe that's possible, but I don't think with the world now, most people believe that. Oh, I think it's definitely possible. And I think it's definitely possible in your family, particularly yeah. in a private environment. I think in a public environment, there's an extra element. The element is that we set a tone and a voice for a whole environment of people. And that comes with an added responsibility. And that added responsibility is your statement makes an impact on the world as a whole. And I don't think as a network that they had a choice and I don't feel that we had another option. And I totally understand. And I never imagined that we could come back or that, that the show would be salvaged in that way. Cause I also thought a lot of people would pull back and not be ready to engage. So I was shocked when we basically then credit to her. She didn't want it to end that way. And that really is what we've done is we decided this was not how we wanted this legacy to end. So in some ways we are trying to acknowledge and atone for that aspect of it and make that not the defining note. Were you like talking at like your castmates, was there any, were you just like, we're going to be canceled or were you shocked when that happened? You know what? It's so, it's so interesting. We never cared about, canceled per se because that wasn't the part that was hard for us it's that we didn't understand what was going on that is a byproduct you know uh, of what happened and i think everybody just accepted that but we never had conversations about that aspect of it because again it wasn't our decision but it also is a, a situation where that wasn't our number one priority right it was more understanding what this person that you love and his family has done yeah, and, and trying to understand, being honest about where you are and trying to be open about how you really feel and move forward. And I, I think that's the thing. Cancel culture as we know it now has grown. I think that was one of the earlier big explosions of it is, 
it is a progressively moving thing. And I think we're, we're having big gut visceral reactions. Now, some are warranted. And listen, racism under any circumstances is not okay. And, and it's an area where I have very strong feelings. So it, it's not something that I'm even going to be remotely flexible about. It's not an area, you know, I have, uh, you know, a young woman that I essentially have adopted who is a person of color who this young woman, how that makes her feel and the things she faces on a day-to-day -day basis and the things that happen. You know, I was in an interracial relationship where we dealt with a lot of people's prejudices and ignorances in real life. And people don't understand. I think it's easy if you have an experienced prejudice, whether it be for race, gender, orientation, religious beliefs, whatever it is, if you haven't faced a really extensive or really overt kind or amount of, of prejudice, it's hard for you to totally grasp how much that can impact your life or your experience. And I think that's part of this too, is this the discussion that we need to have more of. So you don't think the network fired Roseanne too quickly? N not when it refers to racism. I, I think that's one of those areas where we live in a world where people say, well, it, you know, people are too sensitive. And the truth is, no, we just weren't sensitive enough for a really long time. And at a certain point, you have to take hard stances. And I certainly don't think that they made a, a rash judgment. I think it's a hard decision. I think it was rough. I think it was t a terrible outcome in many ways. But given the situation, it, it was totally warranted.